Hello my dear students, in this video I'm going to talk about Jacobi method. It's an iterative scheme which is used to find the approximate solution of the system of linear equations. For our convenience purpose, let's consider the system of two linear equations in two variables only. They are written as a11x1 plus a12x2 is equals to b1 and a21x1 plus a22x2 is equals to b2 where a11, a12, a21, a22 are known as coefficients, b1 and b2 are called constants and x1 and x2 are the variables whose value we are going to find using this method. The algorithm of Jacobi method says that we need to find the solution expression of the first variable from the first equation and the solution expression of the second variable from the second equation. Hence, the solution expression of x1 is written as 1 upon a11 multiplied with the expression p1 minus a12 x2 and the solution expression of x2 is written as 1 upon a22 multiplied with the expression b2 minus a21 x1. Once we have obtained these solution expressions, the Jacobi iterative scheme can be constructed by raising the superscript k plus 1 on the left hand side variables and on the right hand side in the first equation we will raise the superscript k on the variable x2 and we will utilize the k plus 1th approximate solution of x1 obtained in the first equation we will use it in the second equation. Here we will take the value of k is equals to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. When we take the value of k is equals to 0 that is our first iteration and we get the first approximate solution which is which is written as x1 1 x2 1 and as you can see that the solution the solution expression of x1 needs the value of x2 0 which is called the initial solution and we we need to take the initial solution as the guess we need we can use any value of x2 which can be substituted into this uh, first solution expression to get the first approximate solution of x1. Once we have obtained the first approximate solution of x1, we can use that value into the solution expression of x2 to get the first approximate solution of x2. Similarly, we can use the first and second approx uh, first uh, approximate solution of x1 and x2 in the second iteration to find the second approximate solution. In order to find the second approximate solution of x1, we need the first approximate solution of x2. Since we, we have already found the second approximate solution of x1 from the first equation, we can use that value into the solution expression of the x2 here in this second equation. Similarly, we can use the uh, approximate solutions obtained in the second iteration to perform the third iteration and this process goes on and on. Here you can see that this is the sequence of approximate solutions obtained using Jacobi method by taking the successive values of k. As we take the successive values of k, the sequence of approximate solutions are getting closer and closer to the exact solution. But the main thing is that if the given system of linear equation is strictly diagonally dominant system, then the sequence of approximate solution will surely converge to the exact solution. For the given system to be strictly diagonally dominant system, the absolute value of the uh, leading entry, the leading diagonal entry of the first row should be greater than the sum of the absolute values of other, uh, other coefficients in that row. Similarly, the absolute value of the leading diagonal entry of the second row should be greater than the sum of the absolute values of the other coefficients in that row. Hence, for this system, the absolute value of a11 should be greater than the absolute value of a12 and the absolute value of a22 should be greater than the absolute value of a21. One more thing which I want to mention here is that we need to carry out this iterative procedure until we get the required approximate solution. By the required approximate solution, I mean that the, the, diff, the, the error between the exact value, the exact solution and the approximate solution should be very small. 
In case if you don't know the exact solution of the given system, you need to calculate the error between two consecutive approximate solutions. If the error is small, then you can take that approximate solution as your required approximate solution. Let's understand this algorithm by taking one example. 7x1 minus x2 is equals to 6, x1 minus 5x2 is equals to minus 4. This system of linear equations has the exact solution x1 is equals to 1 and x2 is equals to 1. We can see that this system is strictly diagonally dominant system because the absolute value of 7 is greater than the absolute value of minus 1 and the absolute value of minus 5 is greater than the absolute value of 1. Hence, this system is a strictly diagonally dominant system and the sequence of approximate solutions which we are going to obtain using Jacobi method will surely converge to the exact solution x1 is equals to 1 and x2 is equals to 1. As the first step of Jacobi method, we need to find the solution expression of x1 from first equation and the solution expression of x2 from the second equation. Hence, x1 is equals to 1 upon 7 multiplied with the expression 6 plus x2 and x2 is equals to 1 upon 5 multiplied with the solution expression 4 plus x1. Now, we have obtained the solution expressions for x1 and x2. We can construct the Jacobi iterative scheme by just raising the superscript k plus 1 on the left hand side variables. And in the first equation, on the right hand side variable, we will raise the superscript k. And on the right hand side of the second equation, we will raise the superscript k plus 1, where k is equals to 0, 1, 2, and so on. We will take the first, iter first iteration take the value of k is equals to 0 into this scheme, we can see that we are now trying to find the first approximate solution of x1 and x2. To get the first approximate solution of x1, we need the initial, approx approx uh, initial approximate solution or initial solution of x2. And then once we have found the first approximate solution of x1, we will utilize it into the second equation to find the first approximate solution of x2. Let us assume that the initial uh, appro approximate solution uh, of x1 and x2 is 0. Then the first approximate solution of x1 is computed as 0 0.85714. And then we will use this value here in this equation, second equation, to get the first approximate solution of x2 which is 0 0.97. 1, 4, 3. Similarly, we will take k is equals to 1 to get the uh, second approximate solution in the second iteration. We, we will utilize the first approximate solution of x2 to calculate the second approximate solution of x1, which is computed as 0 0.97959. And then we will use the first second approximate solution of x1 right into the second equation to get the second approximate solution of x2 which is computed at 0 0.96. Similarly, we can utilize the second approximate solutions of x1 and x2 to get the third approximate solution and this iterative procedure goes on and on until you get the required approximate solution. Here in this table, I have computed the approximate solution up to the fifth approximate solution which are computed as 0 0.99994 and the, the uh, fifth approximate solution of x2 is computed as 0 0.99999. As we, all, we have already noticed that the exact solution of this system is 1 and 1. So, I will uh, compute the error between the exact solution and this approximate solution obtained at the fifth approximate solution which is computed as 10 power, point, uh, 10 power minus 5 which I consider as the a very small error, hence I consider this approximate solution as the required approximate solution which is computed as x1 is equals to 0 0.99999, x2 is equals to 0 0.99994. If you have any question regarding this video, you can uh, write it into the comment section. I will try my best to solve your problems. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.